Welcome to Gambling with an Edge with your hosts, Bob Dancer and Richard Munchkin. Bob Dancer is America's premier video poker writer and teacher. He's written 10 books, including Video Poker for the Intelligent Beginner and the best-selling Million Dollar Video Poker. He helped develop the computer software Video Poker for Winners, and in 2004, he was inducted into the Video Poker Hall of Fame. Richard Munchkin has been a professional advantage player for over 30 years and is in the Blackjack Hall of Fame. His book, Gambling Wizards, Conversations with the World's Greatest Gamblers, is a testament to the many ways you can succeed at gambling. The goal of the show is that you'll be a more knowledgeable gambler tomorrow than you were yesterday. And now, here are Bob and Richard. Good afternoon. Welcome to Gambling with an Edge. I'm Bob Dancer. And I'm Richard Munchkin. Our guest today is no guest at all. Richard and I will be discussing a number of things that have filled up our Gambling with an Edge at gmail.com inbox over the past several weeks. The MGM has announced there will soon be parking fees in its self-parking garages in Las Vegas. Bean counters attack again. <laughs> so far, we haven't found out how big the fees are going to be and whether they will be reversed for players, hotel guests, or maybe hot women. Don't know. Since there are three MGM properties at the corner of the Trop and Strip, the fourth property, the Tropicana, which has just recently changed hands, now has a built-in advertising slogan of no parking fees. What has Las Vegas come to? What do you make it, Richard? Yeah, you know, just I just am constantly shaking my head at the what I consider to be idiotic uh, decisions on the casinos' parts. Um, and this reminds me of a, a friend of mine who's lived here for 40 years or so. Now, this goes back maybe 10 years. She pulled into the valet at Mandalay Bay, and... Uh, she and and the valet uh said are you a hotel guest and she said no and she tried to hand him a 20 dollar bill and he said no i'm sorry we can only take hotel guests and she said it's 20 dollars." and he said no i'm sorry we can only take hotel guests and she said is this still las vegas and and you know to me that was the beginning of the slide it's just going uh, way progressively downhill ever since and I just they think they've forgotten the way the gambling business works. I think they're no longer thinking about it like the gambling business. They're now a an entertainment, you know, destination that the gambling is kind of an afterthought. I actually think this is going to hurt the entire city. There will be players who live in Southern California who are sort of indifferent between driving to Vegas or visiting one of the southern california casinos which are closer but maybe not quite as sexy as vegas you add parking fees to vegas and that'll be enough to change some minds yeah i I think it'll change some yeah i agree and it'll be interesting to see how the tropicana deals with it because they could say free parking here or or they could say oh well they're kind of trapped on the corner we can charge too we'll charge less maybe we'll make some money i don't know it'll be interesting to see what they uh, you know, what they do. But if I was the Caesars properties, I'd certainly be, you know, tooting my horn loudly that, that we don't charge for parking. Uh, huh. All right. New subject. Last weekend, Richard and I had lunch with this guy who uses Twitter to keep up with video poker progressives. Two different casinos in his area, and he asked us not to reveal exactly where his area is, but I can tell you it's not Alaska. These two casinos tweak jackpot amounts every day. If you're playing, if playing progressives is your thing, either video poker or table games, you might want to check out whether such information is available where you play. It could be useful. Yeah, that's really valuable information. Uh, back in the online online uh, gambling days, you know, there were, Ken Smith had a great website where he would give you the up to the minute stats on every progressive jackpot at every online casino and all the video poker progresses as well and with the video poker at least he would tell you when they crossed over into positive territory um so yeah who knew that this uh information was available online um it's actually so. twitter uh, in this particular case but it could be not that many casinos tweet 
but this is well they all tweet but n- not that many i think uh tweet about their progressive jackpots um but that's uh that is useful information both to the sharps and the squares yeah yeah I'm sure there are a few guys who already know about this and are taking advantage of it, sitting at home going, God damn it, don't say that on the air. <laughs> For those of you who like that, this was Richard's idea. <laughs> yeah. All right, another new subject. We've gotten some emails from players who are considering moving to Las Vegas. They're already professional gamblers, so they want to be close to the mother load. I'll let you start this one off, Richard. Would this be a smart move? Well, yeah, and I want to say that uh, there were two things that kind of prompted this whole topic. A was a friend of mine who's moving here, and we get this kind of email question a lot. Uh, but also it was a comment that, that a player made on a, on a forum where he sort of offhandedly said, you know, if you move to Las Vegas, it's pretty easy to pick up 50000 a year. And when I first read that, it sort of struck me, and I thought, wow, is that true? You know, uh, because I think there would be a whole lot of people who would be ready to pick up stakes and and head to Las Vegas if that were true. Um, And the more I thought about it, um, the more I came to the conclusion that – the people who can come here and easily make 50000 a year could probably make a hundred or a hundred and fifty. You know, if with with more work and a bigger bankroll, you know what I mean. Like for for a guy who wants to read a book and come here and make fifty thousand, that I don't think is going to happen. But if you're already a skilled player of some sort, then yeah, I think it is pretty easy. Um, I mean, I this year um, I had never played video poker before, and um, this year I maybe played one hundred hours of video poker in the year. Uh, c- certainly not, certainly not two hundred, and I think I've accumulated like twenty five thousand in free play, um, free play at drawing winnings, uh, you know, loss rebates, things like that. Um, now, obviously, I generated some amount of negative EV to get that, um, but still, for so little amount of work, uh, you know, that's you're twenty five ahead, or no, no, that's how much I was actually given in free play, drawing winnings, uh, and I haven't been in any big drawings. I'm just talking about little things. And how much are you down to earn that much? Well, but that's irrelevant because because I think that's a figure that you can't really go by because a lot of what I'm doing is such high variance, right? I mean, I could be ahead 150 on that or I could be stuck 100 on that, right? Especially given that I play a lot of loss rebates. So... Um, so, but I, but I think, um, yeah, and and that's just the video poker. That doesn't include any kind of table games at all. Um, I think it's pretty easy if you want to bet small. I've said this many times. You know that uh, to make fifty dollars an hour, I think at blackjack is pretty easy, and and you should be able to get in a lot of play before you start getting thrown out of everywhere. Um, so, excuse me while I, <laughs> while I turn off my phone. Um, so, yeah, I, I think um, – so somebody who, uh, as you say, already has some skills, I think they can pretty easily, you know, make that 50000 a year. Um, I don't know. What do you think? I think when it comes to video poker, I don't think that's true at all. Now, the numbers that I'm going to say are – about how much you can make are going to be wild ass guesses because um, exactly how much anybody makes outside of me, I don't really know for sure. And the way everybody keeps track of wins and losses is always a little bit different. So no two video poker players fill out their taxes in exactly the same way. But here are my best wild ass guesses. There's probably 30 or more greater Las Vegas area Residents earning fifty thousand dollars a year at video poker, or more, or no, f- uh, fifty, or thirty, or, or around thirty, forty uh, people. Some like some, rel- not zero, but not a lot either. There's probably another two hundred earning between ten and th- uh, and fifty, and another you know three or four hundred earning between zero and ten. Well, wait. What about people who are earning more than fifty? 
They like, would they would be included in the 30, okay, 30 okay. people. Okay. They're earning there'll be 30 people about earning 50 or more. Uh and there's a thousand or two thousand or three thousand people trying to be in this small number. Mm. And some of the ones that don't make it are pretty good players. There's like a lot of the profits come from drawings. But drawings have really high variance. You can get a uh twenty thousand dollar car once every fifteen years, but that's uh you know, but f- fourteen or uh, out of the fifteen years you've entered the drawings and gotten nothing. Uh, so, I mean, that, that would affect your average, but not your... Yeah, that's why on. I think it's better to kind of look at EV than than actual results. And the people who earned 50000 in 2015, and the people who earned it in 2014, and the people who earned it in 2013, now there's a few names that are on all three of those lists, and there's more names that are on two of those lists. But there are some people who only made it once. And so it fluctuates every year. We're playing with like a half percent advantage on the bigger games. And so the difference between, you know, 50.25 and 49.75 is pretty skinny. And, uh, and it, it can really fluctuate a lot. Now, when you're, um, for me personally, in two out of the last five years, I've ended up with negative scores. Now, I'm not asking for your sympathy, and the other three, I'm fine. I'm, I'm, uh, but it can have a pretty big variance. And I'm a better than average player, and I have more, I have better than average contacts. For those of you who are moving here, uh, you're competing against players who already know what games are in all the casinos they already know generally speaking what promotion south point will run in december or uh palms will run in march or somebody else will run in june so we already know that when they have this kind of promotion well these games are over here and so we can take advantage of them that's a lot of built-up information that you're going against and we're all after the same kind of thing. So uh, f- most of the bigger players who are successful, including myself, in addition to playing regularly in Vegas, go out of town several trips a year to play in other locations because on short-term basis, the games in other locations are better than the games in Vegas. Now, actually, I have to, I, I have to agree that I think in general that's true also of table games like vegas is not the best place to move to be a full-time pro other than the fact that there are so many casinos here and you don't have to if you want you can just camp out here but with table games too there is the most amount of heat here i mean a lot of the games are just really uh you know traps right now where you're going to get flyered as soon as you sit down and start betting any kind of money um and and vegas is really bad well first of all the strip casinos have really uh just made the games on the strip terrible you know the blackjack so so much of it now in the strip casinos is eight deck six to five you know you have to go into the high limit room to find a three to two game at all um and then as i say you know, they know how to count cards now. They've figured that out. That, you know, you're just in Vegas, you're just not going to fool them for long if you're betting, you know, big money. If you're, if you're small enough that they don't care, it's not that you're fooling them. It's just that you're betting small enough that they don't care, which, I mean, that can still be a fair amount of money. But, um, you know, but uh, so, yes, I agree with your point that Vegas is not the best place. And most of what I hear about video poker you know, if, if there's, uh, you know, a, a lot of video poker players that live in other places are telling me that they're having much better games there than what they would find here in Vegas or much better mailers. Another point to make is before you move here, take some three to ten day vacations on a rig or take some ten to twenty day vacations here and see how it is. It's a whole lot different playing three days at a time 
when you get to fly back home and go back to whatever your real world is than it is to live here 24 7 it's kind of like the difference between sex on a first date and somebody you've been married to for 12 years it's, <laughs> it's not the same animal at all Right. Well, and that's why, you know, as I say, I, I played maybe 100 hours of video poker just because, yeah, I'm not willing to go out and grind at it like that. But I think to, be, to really be successful, um, you have to play more than one thing. Yes. You know? And, and, uh, and if, I, I think that the guy who had made that post about it being easy to pick up 50000 if you have friends in the business – um, and you are here and av- are available, things are going to come up. You're going to get involved in maybe doing some sports betting and, you know, playing some table games and you play some video poker. And you know what I mean? There, there are other things to uh, – there are other opportunities for you to make money, you know, besides just the uh, – besides just whatever your one game is to start with. And another factor is – do you have a backup plan? Uh, yeah. The um, Is there a, a wife or somebody at home who has a vote as to whether or not you do this? Uh, yeah. Well, that, that brings up sort of another question that I get asked a lot about this. Okay. Um, which uh, – and, and that is, you know, as I posted on our Facebook page – you know, if if you uh, on your first date, if you tell them you're an advantage player, are you ever going to get a second date? Um, in my experience, usually no. <laughs> I mean, there are not uh, many women who understand the concept of uh, gambling for a living. And you, your article this week, uh, the Las Vegas Advisor, was kind of about that, right? When you uh, were at least part of it, yeah, yeah. You want to talk about uh, how how Bonnie reacted when you met her to your living, how you made a living? Well, there have been two separate ladies that I've, I mean, I was married to Shirley for 17 years, and I met her while living here, and then that fell apart, and then now Bonnie. In my particular case, both ladies were the fact that I was willing to take them dancing on a regular basis and that I was good at the Texas two-step was far more important than than whether or not I was a gambler or not. You know, this is actually uh, quite a positive EV move from uh, because I know another guy who met his wife that way. I guess there are not a lot of men who are out there dancing. That's true. And... Uh, I, when I was young and single and I lived here, I found Vegas to be a horrible place uh, to try to meet women. Um, I, I'm, you know, I met a lot of blind, crippled, and crazy. Um, and uh, Which one of those three things bothered you the most? <laughs> uh, mostly emotionally crippled. Uh, but, but uh, you know, I tried a lot of different things to try to meet what I thought would be the kind of women um, that I'd be interested in. You know, as I went to UNLV and took classes, met a lot of nice girls who were like 19 years old. I was, you know, quite a number of years older than that, so that wasn't a good thing. Um, you know, I had a friend who's like, oh, you want to meet smart women? Go to Mensa meetings. <laughs> so, so I went to a Mensa meeting. Now, I was, you know, 25 or something. I went to this Mensa meeting here in Vegas, and, uh, you know, there was like 16 men and one woman who was fat and 50. So, uh, yeah, that was also not a uh, – but I didn't try dancing. That, maybe that was the key. Well, that's positive EV, but that's, that's, that's not for everybody. I learned that way back when, that uh, a guy who knows – how to dance well, never has to sleep alone if he doesn't want to. Uh-huh. The, um, let's talk about a related, something else you said, that uh, a guy who could make 50000 a year gambling could probably make more money doing something else. Well, I also think he could make more money gambling. But yeah, I, I think most... What I, I think what I said is most advantage players that I know uh, could have could make as much or more money out in the real world. Um, and, and people used to ask me this, right? They would say, uh-huh. man, if you can do this, you must be, you'd be able to make a lot more money if you went into whatever. And my response to that was always, why would I want to? You know, I, when I was um, 13, 
Uh-huh. Uh, my father was a lawyer in Chicago, and uh, one summer I worked in his law office, and I would take the train down to the loop, and the train station, you had to come out of the train station and go to either side, and there were bridges across the Chicago River. And I came out, and the people were, there were just thousands of people like ants crossing those bridges from the train station. Uh-huh. And I said to myself, I will never ever do this with my life i would rather kill myself than be one of those people marching to work every day uh you know in their suit and tie and you know so a lot of people make those statements and then they uh they end up being those ants without killing themselves yeah you know and i saw my friends when i was younger get trapped you know they would get some job and then suddenly they felt like they couldn't quit because they were earning this money right. and you know and i was in the arts so i was like man i don't want that to happen to me you know i'm not, I'm not gonna make the mistake of <laughs> making a lot of money in a job <laughs> oh, that, that, that was clever yeah my parents would love that idea but um, now I have a somewhat different take on it. To be a successful gambler, you need a certain amount of smarts. You need an IQ. Uh, You need to be educated about the game or games you're playing, but you don't need to be educated in any way that relates to a job. Um, Most employers want people with specific skills, not just IQ. Uh, Although there are some exceptions. a large number of not quite successful enough professional gamblers end up dealing cards, driving a cab, waiting at tables, or maybe taking a sales job somewhere. Now, if you graduated from MIT... Those sound like poker players, by the way. <laughs> well, if you graduated from MIT, those are blackjack players, or, or other pre- prestigious schools, you'll have plenty of opportunities that the rest of us don't. Uh, many gamblers have college degrees on their resumes. But many don't. It all comes down to, like Richard was saying, what do you want to do? When I moved to Vegas in 1993, for the first couple of years, I was making about 10 grand. Uh, But I loved it. Uh, This is what I wanted to do. Money won from a casino was just so much more satisfying than drawing a paycheck. Um, Your mileage can vary. I had to shift from blackjack to video poker. I tell people that when I was trying to learn video poker, I was willing to work very, very hard so I didn't have to get a job. Now they laugh and they say it's a cute line, but I'm dead serious. Having to get a job after being a professional gambler is psychologically devastating. It would be an admission that I couldn't make it on my wits. Uh, It took hard work little help from my friends and probably a certain amount of luck that I don't know how to measure but eventually I learned how to make it here in Vegas as a gambler didn't have to turn that out that way I do have other sources of income you know from writing teaching radio show etc but I hope very very much I never have to go get a full time job <laughs> well at this stage of your life I, I wouldn't think that that would be a very real possibility I know there aren't a lot of good jobs for 68 year olds yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The, uh, um, and somebody who's been a professional gambler for 30 years uh, most employers would be wary of hiring them because they would figure there's going to be some days that you're going to come in dog tired because you've been out gambling for 12 hours all night long and uh and your job was never going to be your first love, no matter how much I promised differently in the interview. Well, I also think that people that have been doing it 30 years must have been successful or, I mean, or they wouldn't still be doing it, you know. I mean, I guess there are some of these guys out there that I call fleas that, you know, are there scrounging, you know, nickel ultimate X uh, multipliers and stuff. But, uh, I mean, most people I know, if they've been doing it, If they're not successful at it, most people get out of it. So if you've been doing it this long, you know, uh, I mean, you know, I know you've been very successful. So I can't see you going broke. Well, I'm not going to go broke unless something happens to the economy as a whole. The, I could see the United States or world economy tanking and whatever money I have invested in the stock market and stuff. 
under those circumstances, I could see a lot of us going broke. Yeah, but, but then we um, have bigger problems. Then you have bigger <laughs> yeah. problems in that. But uh, there's... You know, there's one other thing I want to say. The most important thing, uh, I think, is uh, what on Survivor they call the social game. Yeah. The big, the better your social game is, the the more successful you're going to be, because as as I was saying. Well, that's before, true in every job or most yeah, jobs. Yeah, I think that's true. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, well, not every job. I mean, if you have a job like, uh, you know, accountant or whatever, where you're just sitting there crunching numbers for someone, it's not that big a deal, you know. But. Um, but in, in this kind of thing, the more people you know, the more opportunities you're going to be presented with. I'm mean, assuming you're not an asshole anyway. You know, if you know lots of people and they all hate you, <laughs> well, then, then that isn't going to uh, – uh, but, you know, the more friends you have, the more time somebody's going to call you up and say, hey, we're putting together, you know, this thing to go whatever, you know, a money-making opportunity that uh, you might get included in. Uh, just based on how well you're liked. And hopefully when that happens, you're smart enough to figure out which ones are the scams and which one have a real chance. Cause, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because um, you will get a lot more offers than you're wise to take. Um, you know, I, I should also say that the vast majority of gamblers that I know mm-hmm. that then – took the money they earned gambling and put into some business <laughs> most of them lost whatever the money was that you know when they went out and tried to do some other business most of the people i know lost money at the outside businesses um and then would go back to and myself included you know um you know i i lost money in the movie business uh certainly uh you know, lost opportunity costs too. I mean, sometimes I was just a, a director for hire or whatever, and then that's fine. But you know, when I had my own company and all that, ultimately we lost money. So there are players though who burn out. We've had um, when Josh Ax- Axelrod was on the show. His book is called "You Know Repeat Until Rich," and it's like. He kept doing the same thing over and over and over again, and finally it was just boring, monotonous, no meaning in life, blah, blah, blah. You know, I've had two people in the last week uh, that I know who are sort of suffering from this right now. Yeah, and especially in the blackjack world where you're constantly on the road. I mean, to be really successful, you have to be constantly traveling, you know, and, and, uh, boy, for me, that got old, that got really old. And, um, and so, yeah, I know, I know two people who right now are suffering very much from that burnout. They just, the thought of getting on another plane and going to another hotel room. And, and to me, it, it's worse for them than I thought it was for me because I was always traveling with somebody, uh, which, you know, helps, but still even that, you know, it's, it's uh, very easy to get burned out. And I think you just what – I, what I tell my son, you know, is, um, you know, gambling isn't your life. Your life is your life, and this is just a way to make money. You know, but you have to have something else in your life besides this to – just to be happy or to, you know, because, yeah, otherwise it's just too much of a grind. Yeah, I was uh, chatting with a guy at the gym today, and he is a video poker player who, I don't know for exactly, probably averages 15 or 20 a year, but it's a everyday grind out. He plays uh, fairly low stakes and long hours, and it's a grind, it's a grind, it's a grind. Wow. And so now he's thinking about moving somewhere else. So he moved to Las Vegas originally because... Lower taxes, cheaper to buy a house. Uh, there's a lot of good reasons, but um, he now is thinking, well, maybe the grass wasn't as green as he thought it was. Yeah, you know, and I should say about the video poker that I'm playing, a big part of that for me now, currently, isn't the money, it's the comps. You know, I want to be able to take my wife to dinner and nice places and get show tickets and, you know, stuff like that. And, and not pay for it, you know. Yes. <laughs> uh, yes. And make money at the same time, but 
But I'm, uh, you know, as I say, I, I'm not out there grinding because you're not out there grinding, and you have a um, big advantage over most other players in that you know a lot of successful video poker players and who are giving you some hints of you know this would be a good idea for you to do <laughs> yes you, yes you, that you, helps tremendously and yep. uh not everybody has those contacts i would venture to say very few people have the same contacts richard does <laughs> all right uh if you're listening live the uh, world series is about to start they had some um interesting prop bets in the uh the newspaper about uh, different prop bets you can make. It didn't say what casino you could make them at. The one I found most, two I found most interesting is it was 100 to 1 you could bet whether or not there would be a streaker at one of the games. Right. 9 to 1 just for someone to run out on the field. 100 to 1 if they're naked. <laughs> and even better, 5,000 to 1 if they if a streaker lands on the field having jumped in a parachute from an airplane. Right, right. Now, Which, I mean... That sounds like an opportunity. It's like... Uh, well, that's more expensive. But even at nine to one, I mean, if you could get some serious money down, I mean, how bad... How much... I bet you could get a guy to go streak across the field pretty cheap. Well, or a thousand, you know, 5,000 to one, you know, like, let's, let's, let's get a thousand dollars down on this. And, you know, you got to hire a plane and a parachute, and that isn't that much. And you probably have to spend 30 days in jail. But when you get out, you got $5 million. <laughs> so, uh, you know. Well, first you, of all, you wouldn't do it yourself. You well, got, <laughs> you know, you got to hire somebody to do it. Well, I don't know. I, I, I don't think there's a whole lot of demand to see a 68 year old dingling. But, uh, <laughs> but however you do it, uh, there just seems to be such good proper alternative. Which probably means, well, the max you can get down is ten dollars or something. Right, right. Yeah, I'd I'd love to. Uh, I should probably do that. Just go into one of these joints and see. I want to bet five thousand on the parachute streaker and see what they say. <laughs> and uh, yeah. you're right; they'll probably take ten bucks. <laughs> and uh, and nine to one on somebody running onto the field. That seems like a. Uh, it seems like the wrong price. Uh, well, the, I mean, th- I was thinking at nine to one they might actually take some serious bets. You know, if you could spread around, you know, a, a number of places and get money down on that. I mean, it can't cost you much to have a guy streak on the field. A few hundred dollars. I mean, you know. I don't know. Plus uh, the cost of the ticket. I guess he's got to have a ticket to the game. That might be the most expensive part. And he's got to be willing to spend. So much time in jail. What? Overnight, maybe? I don't know. You, uh, even that. Are they really going to arrest the guy and, and put him in jail? Probably, yeah. They actually probably are. And I, uh, if I were a streaker, I wouldn't want to meet Bubba in my jail cell. Sorry. <laughs> um, the, um, all right. We talked about... Uh, whether or not you should announce that you're a, an advantage player on a date. What if you're married now and you're, you know, your wife knows what you're going to do and you're thinking about coming to Vegas. Now, in my case, I was already a successful professional in this business before I got hooked up with either Shirley or Bonnie. Uh, but there are times when people became an advantage gambler after maybe 20 years of marriage. How does that work? Yeah, I mean, it's, I think if you're just starting out or if you're fairly new to it, it's going to be a lot harder sell, right, to your wife. Whereas uh, with me, I was a gambler when my wife met me, uh, you know, and one of the reasons I married her was she just understood, like – this is a business. You're not a degenerate. And most women don't get it. But for some reason, my wife got it. And um, so uh, coming to Vegas for us, I mean, we'd already been married 20 plus years. So it wasn't really a big issue. But if you're somebody who just recently has learned how to play and you've been playing, and even if you can go to your wife and say, look, you know, I'm keeping records. Here's the money I'm winning. Let's move to Vegas, honey. Man, I think that'd be a tough sell for a lot of, you know, a lot of wives. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know. All right. Another question I guess get asked, where should I live? You know, where, oh, what part of town? What part of town? Yeah. Okay. Um, now I have a friend who's moving here next month okay. and uh, you know, the short answer is usually Henderson or Summerlin, you know. Yes. <laughs> For those non familiar with Henderson is southeast of Vegas, Summerlin is northwest. Yeah, and and my friend actually is sort of artsy and funky, and I said, you know, you also might want to consider near downtown, um, where there are older homes, a lot of the artists have moved in down there, um, and this particular friend, uh, you know, she likes that kind of thing. So, uh, like when when she lived in L.A., she lived in Silver Lake, which is, you know, kind of the artsy, funky area, you know. So, um, but I actually think... Uh, if you want a short answer, then Summerlin or Henderson, and it seems like more people with kids tend to go to Summerlin, um, and I'd include Green Valley in with Henderson. They're right next to each other. Yeah. Um, but there are pockets all over that are... And I would pick one. I would pick a home close to a freeway. There are... If you're going to be at a lot of different casinos, uh, Vegas is, is a big place. And yeah. you need you need to be able to get around now, uh, and so decide which casinos you're going to be playing at. Now, for video poker, you you can know which casinos you're going to play at, which has the best games. For blackjack, it's all of them, so uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's tougher. Be moving around a lot, <laughs> yeah. but you need to uh, you know hooking up in Boulder City or something, which is 15 miles away and might have a better quality of life for kids. You're driving a lot of freeways. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. So for my wife, it was important to be close to Seafood City, <laughs> seafood which is City. the fish market. <laughs> right. So everybody has their own, uh, you know. I would have thought you would have ended up closer to Chinatown and those markets than you did. Well, Seafood City is just the other side of the freeway that from Chinatown. So yeah, we're we're not that far from Chinatown either. <laughs> so. We uh, got an email, gamblingwithanedge at gmail.com, concerning Harris or Caesars, where this guy has a lot of um, reward credits and is thinking about cashing them in and wants to know if he should or not. Right. I mean, because of the bankruptcy. And we've, we've talked about this uh, before, um, but actually... Um Something that I would ask you, even if we were off the air, okay. is I don't understand why people uh, accumulate a ton of these anyway. If you can cash them out for cash, e e I know you pay some premium or whatever, but uh -huh. if you can download them for free play, I mean, I, I, I have lots of stories of guys who had their points stolen from them. So yes. why you would let them accumulate, I don't understand in the first place. All right. A couple of reasons for that. First of all, if you're seven stars, it's either a 20 or 25% premium, depending on which side you do it on. It takes uh, $500 worth of points to get $400 of uh, free play. There's currently a maximum of 500 per day. And so if you have several thousand, it's going to take a while, but you can do it. Now... For me, when I redeem the free play, that's a taxable event. I'm recording the free play I get and the front money and various things as income, which I think is the proper way to do it. If it's still being saved, then it's not a taxable event. So if you, um, if you are ahead at the end of the year, there's no reason, perhaps, to download eight thousand dollars worth of uh, accumulated because that's just more taxes. Whereas if you were behind, you might as well download it now because you don't get any benefit from having uh, any tax benefit from See, having I'd, these losses. I'd be afraid to let that much accumulate just because you know, being a blackjack player, I'm paranoid that at some point they're just going to throw me out and uh, and take all my, and steal all my money. You know. Well, that that is possible to happen. Some people use it as a bank account. They're um, 
the brother's getting married, and I I want to throw him a big party at Caesar's Palace uh, next September, and so I'm saving all my reward credits between now and then, so I don't have to pay cash for it. Ah, I see. So yeah. there are those kind of reasons. It's also a lot harder to uh, to earn those uh, credits than it used to be. Um, the games are a lot tighter there. The um, a lot of us who played a lot in Las Vegas at Caesar's property in the not so distant past aren't playing here anymore. And we're, whatever Caesar's we're doing, we're playing elsewhere. Uh, so but not just Caesar's. I mean, what about other places too? I mean, like at, at stations, right? Mm-hmm. You can download your points for free play right there on the machine. Yes. And you can do that at Palms and at South Point and M and right, so, most of the casinos. Yeah, so why would you let them accumulate then? Uh, or at least, I mean, I keep, you know, 100 or $200 or something on there. But An additional reason at Caesars n- to download everything is, let's say you have $500 worth of points that you could... D- um, download if you wanted to but you have them there and you go up and you ask for a comp you will frequently be told use your points first if your points have ground down to zero or close to it then they can start comping you so that's that's a reason to spend your comps independent of the bankruptcy it, you know independent of whether or not they're going to steal them from you independent of anything else that if you can get it, keep it down to zero, you will get more comps if you ask for them. Uh, if you have a balance, you get fewer comps. So, uh, so when you can download it for free play, you can you can zero it out fairly quickly if you're there. Yeah. So I uh, I will be at a uh, a five day stay early in January and. You can bet every day I will do $500 a day until it's gone. That seems crazy they have that limit, right? If you, if you, and especially if you download 500 and lose it, you would think they would want you to download more, right, and keep playing. Um, well, they would prefer you spend it in their hotel rooms and their restaurants and their bars than oh. in gambling money. Yeah. The uh, Apparently the return in the... The restaurants is better for them than the return in the casino. Yeah, that makes sense, actually. So um, so every time now I'm at a Caesars, uh, but it trips you. So if you you need to, you don't want to go in and do it on days that you're not playing, or that hurts your offers down the road. But it's um, But doing it when you're playing anyway, I would get down close to zero if I could. All right. Let's... Let's do some commercials while Richard's thinking of something else we can talk about until our time is up. Checking my Twitter account at RWM21 for questions coming in. The South Point has more than 10,000 gains, returning more than 99%. That's more than anybody else has. Promotion in October, it actually ends tomorrow, is called Swipe, Spin, and Win. Earn 300 points a day, Sundays through Wednesdays, and spin the virtual wheel. Uh, Today I got... Bonnie and I each got $25 in free play, which is a, uh, the second best prize. There is a $50 free play option. We probably we got that four times over the course of the promotion. Um, it can go down as low as uh, 2,500, 2,500 points, which is worth $7.50. Free video poker class tomorrow is NSU Deuces Wild. NSU is a 99.7 game. Uh, it's basically even money 24-7 at the South Point because they have a .30 slot club. On double point days, you're at a .3 advantage. And this is in addition to the mailers and the promotion. The in Next week, we're going to have Advanced NSU. So Advanced NSU covers every last penalty card situation. And it is in any Deuces Wild game. There's a lot of those. So if you want to consider playing at a very high level and come to the class next week, pretty much you're forced to 
come to the class this week as well, or at least to have knowledge at that level. When we have the advanced class next week, we're going to presume that you play at least at the intermediate level, and that level of knowledge is going to be presumed. And if that's way above what you already know, um, you're you're going to get lost quickly. At the Palms, every Friday there's a drawing. Ten people get drawn for a total of ten thousand dollars. Top prize is three thousand. Uh, you don't need to be there, but you do need to redeem it before midnight or it goes away. They have multiple drawing entries on Friday nights and also Friday afternoons. Uh, for one more Saturday in October, Valentine's Day, uh, there's going to be double points on video poker, 10 times points for slots between 7 and 10 p.m. PFP, play for prizes. For this week, up until Friday, it's going to be Macy's gift cards. Macy's gift cards are earned at the rate of 0.2% for video poker or point or 2.0% for slots. Videopoker.com is the best place to play lots of games. If you have the gold membership, $8.95 a month or $79.95 a year, it gives you correction on a lot of the games. This week's contest is Ultimate X. Ultimate X is a uh, two-part game. You pay 10 coins per line. It's usually found in triple play, five play, or 10 play. It can be in single line, or theoretically it could be at 100 play. That'd be a hell of a game. Every time you score on a line, you get a multiplier on that same line for the next hand. So when this hand is over, completely over, if you scored at all, you'll, you might have a 2x on the fourth line and a 7x on the sixth line and a 12x on the tenth line. And so whatever you get on the next line, if you can get the score on those particular lines, it is multiplied. The strategy is not trivial. It is based both on playing the base game and on what the multipliers are. So to figure everything out exactly, it kind of uses a, a Markov chain situation. It's non-trivial for most of us. The Wizard of Odds has several games analyzed, and so that's the strategy that most players use when it is on it. Unfortunately, it doesn't have Deuces Wild on his website, and there are some good Deuces Wild Ultimate X games out there, and people are scrounging for that. Uh, so, so that's a different game. All right. So uh, one of our listeners uh, tweeted at us. He said, one concern about moving to Vegas is the apparent high crime rate for such a small town. Uh-huh. First of all, Vegas Valley is 2 million people. I would not call it a small town. Um, also, I don't know. This doesn't bother me at all. Um, I think f- certainly if you look at the crime rates in Henderson and Summerlin, I, I don't think they're high at all. Uh, I think you'll find that the, you know, there are pockets of high crime rate. Um, but, yeah, this is just something I never worry about. I mean, I'm careful when I leave casinos, uh, especially if I'm carrying money. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not – I'm really not worried about the crime rate here. I, you know, I think one thing that's really dangerous here is uh, I'm more worried about running over a uh, pedestrian. There's so much jaywalking in this town, and it seems like at least once a week I see on the news somebody got killed while they were jaywalking. Um, but you, I don't know. Does, do you find this to be a high-crime town? No, I don't. Uh, and we live in a safer-than-average neighborhood. And I have since I've been here, and we, you pay extra for those neighborhoods. There are gated communities. We're, we're not in a gated community, but there are some communities with a higher rate than others. But there are some places in Vegas that I would not feel real comfortable living. It's um, it's a problem everywhere in the world, every, everywhere in the country, everywhere in the world. But Vegas, not so much. I I don't spend time. I don't lose any sleep over that. 
Yeah, I, I don't either. I mean, I'm also in a good neighborhood. and uh, But, yeah, as you say, there are pockets. There are neighborhoods, you know, you wouldn't want to go walking down the street at 2 in the morning. But, you know, I mean, I grew up near Chicago. So anybody who's grown up near a major city, I think, feels the same way, right? Like in L.A., if you live in, you know, Bel Air, you're going to feel safe, and if you live in Compton, maybe you're not. Yeah. Well, there's a different uh, there's a different level of risk in, uh, and I don't. I mean, Compton is is a largely black area, and so I don't I don't really want to get into the racial aspects of it. But uh, Beverly Hills and Bel Air, that's where the rich folks live, and so for a uh, an intelligent I- burglar uh, <laughs> would better break into a home in Beverly Hills than a house in Compton. Yeah, sure, sure. And so there's a different kind of crime. There's a different um, level of situation. Yeah, I mean, I think if you're moving here from a farm in Iowa, then, you know, it's going to look like the big bad city, you know, with a lot of crime. And if you're moving here from a major city in the United States, I don't think it's going to phase you. It doesn't. Yeah. The uh, as it turns out, tomorrow morning, at s- at seven o'clock in the morning, Richard and I are going to be doing an interview with uh, Dewey Tomko, and that's going to be broadcast November tenth, which is uh, two weeks from today. Uh, Dewey is one of the old time gamblers. He's been a S- poker player, golfer for like almost 50 years. He and I are the same age. Well, actually, he's three years, three months older than me. But um, he's been, so he has great stories. So we're really looking forward to this. Do you got your Dewey questions ready, Richard? Uh, yeah, yeah, I got a few. I, 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 what's funny is I, you know, sort of send out an email blast asking people to send me Dewey stories to ask him about. And it seems like more of them came back, oh, here's a great story, but you can't ask him about it on the air. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but you, he, f- the good thing is he's one of those guys who likes to tell stories. So, you know, I don't think we'll have a hard time uh, coming and, up with stuff to talk about. And you get, he, he gives, um, you ask him, well, you know, what was the biggest amount you played for at golf on these, you know, when golf hustling and. And his answer will be something like, well, bunches of money. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, very good. So, we got about 30 seconds left. How do people get a hold of us? Well, send us your questions at gamblingwithanedge at gmail.com, or you can put them on our Facebook page, uh, facebook.com slash gamblingwithanedge, or you can tweet them to me at rwm21. Uh, if you want the show delivered to you automatically every week, you can sign up to do that at iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, or at my site, richardmunchkin.com. And to get an archive of all of our old episodes, you can find that at bobdancer.com. Very good. Thank you, Richard. Go out and hit lots of royal flushes, everybody. Good night. You've been listening to Gambling with an Edge with your hosts, Bob Dancer and Richard Munchkin. Subscribe to the show in iTunes, and episodes will be delivered to you automatically every week. Archived versions of past shows may be found at bobdancer.com and richardmunchkin.com. We welcome emails at gamblingwithanedge at gmail.com. Bob Dancer and Richard Munchkin are both available on Facebook and welcome your questions. The sponsors for the show are the South Point Hotel, Casino, and Spa, the M Resort, the Palms Casino Resort, and the website videopoker.com. Join us again next week for another Gambling with an Edge. Mommy.